Awesome. So a little bit about us, for those of you unfamiliar with Grow and Lead, we're a nonprofit organization that works throughout the UP to make sure this is a great place for kids to grow up. Um, we do that through working uh, with the nonprofit sector that is a critical sector to our communities thriving. So we do training, consultations, um, we have a membership program, and facilitation in the sector. And special projects like um, you may have, some of you have met through my work with the census. Um, so if you've worked with the census in the nonprofit sector at all, that's one of our special projects as well as Giving Tuesday. Oop, we're not quite ready for poll one. There we go. All right, so first Giving Tuesday um, is a global generosity movement. Some of you, um, if you've been doing Giving Tuesday for a while, you may um, remember it as being the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. It still is that, but they've moved away from the idea of Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, Cyber Monday, Giving Tuesday, um, and moved it more into um, a generosity movement. And we'll talk about what that means beyond December 1st. Um, but the big Giving Tuesday day that we're all familiar with is December 1st, 2020. So I talked a little bit about how Give906 is a community campaign, and I just wanted to show everyone this map of where all the community campaigns are. Um, in the US, so you can see there's a lot of them. It's exciting to see a red dot on the Upper Peninsula. Um, and what community campaigns are, are promotional rallies around a geographic area. So um, we have the 906 area code just because so many nonprofits here in the UP serve people from all across the region. Um, as you know, there are some that are smaller and serving just a particular city, county, um, township, community, but there are a number that are UP wide and with the amount of um, people in the UP and connection to different areas of the UP, having a regional campaign just made sense. So I wanna know where you are. We're gonna do a little activity right now. Um, my instructions are wrong. I learned this right before we went on. Karen, could you give a better instruction on where they'll find that button? Look for the view options screen. And I've got, hang on just one sec. I've got a couple people I'm gonna let in. So if you hover near the top of your screen, you'll have a view options drop-down box. And if you click on that, then you'll see annotate and click on that. And then once you're in annotate, there is a stamp. If you click that stamp button, you'll see a star. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my star here on Marquette. So you can see that's where I'm located. There we go. I see stars are popping up. We've got hearts, I love it. Someone in the middle of Lake Superior, fantastic, <laughs> perfect. Um, I know we have someone from Wisconsin that was gonna join just to learn about what we're doing over here in the UP, which is great. If, if you're not from the UP, yeah, you can just put it kind of whichever direction you are. Awesome, look at that fly-in. So you can see we've got a pretty great representation uh, west end of, of the UP, it's lagging a little, but we've got representation from Central, Copper Country, East, awesome. Thank you guys all for being here. All right, so we'll clear these off. I've learned that the stars will stay on the slide. So we're gonna clear them out quick. There we go. They're still popping up, I love it. This is so fun. All right. So a little bit about Give906. Um, if you've been participating for a while, you know that we started our directory of Giving Tuesday projects way back in 2013. So we've always had a listing. You've been able to register. Um, we shared the listing with media. 
And then we started hearing that um, a little more cohesiveness would be helpful. So we convened a group of nonprofits in 2018 and um, the brand that kind of bubbled up was the idea of give 906 because there's a lot of ways you can give 906 you can give nine dollars and six cents you can give in the 906 you can give um 906 hours over a year there's just so many ways that people can interpret that give 906 um, and it re reflected the area code so that was the brand that came came forward and there was this goal of region-wide raising nine hundred six thousand dollars um, in 2019, we officially became affiliated with the Giving Tuesday community campaigns, which opened up the opportunity to see how much money is given via online transactions. Um, and so with billing zip codes located in the 906 area code, um, over a million dollars was given in 2019, which is amazing, blew our goal out of the water. Um, and I actually have a county by county breakdown of that. So if you serve one county um, or a few counties and you'd be interested in those numbers, let me know. I didn't put that all together, um, but I do have that in a spreadsheet. It's a lot of data, but I can, I can dig out your county and um, figure out kind of what that giving capacity was last year. So um very successful campaign of of giving um the only thing that we don't get information on is where those gifts actually went so we don't know if they stayed in the up right we just know they were given from the up and that's one of the things that we really want to focus on with give 906 is uh, making sure people think about giving here and keeping their dollars in the up so a few um, reimagined or new initiatives coming from Giving Tuesday Global. Um, first, we have a poll. I'm going to launch it here. And the first poll is, do you have potential supporters outside of the Upper Peninsula? So I've got the poll open and I'm going to have you guys answer that question. Um, have you given any thought to it? Do you have supporters that are no longer in the UP? And we'll leave that open for about 15 more seconds. Awesome. All right. And share those results. Awesome, look at that, 94% of you have supporters outside of the Upper Peninsula. So this first initiative is going to be, I think, of interest to a lot of you. Next, our first initiative is called Diaspora Giving. So one of the interesting things about Giving Tuesday is that it is a global opportunity for giving. So this topic came up actually from uh, the Bahamas, where a lot of people visit the Bahamas but don't live there and have um, an affinity for the Bahamas. And so they have been doing a lot of outreach to um, the US and Europe and they've kind of been building communities that give back even though they're not, not, not there all the time. And that just felt really like something that could work here in the UP, especially for those of you that have um, strong networks outside of the area. The people, people that visit the UP, that are from the UP, that have gone to college or university here tend to have a deep connection to the area. Um, so looking at ways you can connect with groups outside of the area through um, alumni associations. Um, there are some UP meetup groups. I know I have a friend out in Colorado that goes to one where it's just people from the UP that get together at a brewery. Um, so there are, if you're able to find those groups or you have those groups in your network, that is a great way to um, connect with people outside of the area. Uh, another thing that was done was creating a network of ambassadors. So if you have one person in Chicago, 
or Detroit area um, that's out and has a network of people from the UP, you can use the, their network and have them be an ambassador for your organization to spread the word about your Giving Tuesday project in that area. Um, if you have the budget for it, social media does allow some very um, targeted ad purchases. So you can find people in a certain geography that have um, certain likes or um, demographics and you can target specifically to them so you could find people who like pages related to the upper peninsula of michigan and your cause so that um, you're finding people that care about your cause and have an affinity for the area and one of the things that they really stressed is when you have these diasporas out in areas that you aren't living they need to trust and have knowledge of who you are. It's really um, easy for them to feel like they're being scammed if they just start getting random things and they, they've never heard of you. So making sure that you're building trust and they have knowledge either of the area. If you're a newer nonprofit, this might be harder if people have been gone for 20 years, you know, you weren't around, that trust and knowledge might not be there. Um, but for more tourism-based or very um, organizations with very long history, this could be a great tactic to use um, to kind of build out your network around Giving Tuesday. The next thing that is reimagined, or we're going to call it, is engaging local business because it's going to look really different this year with everything that's going on. Um, the first thing that they talked about a lot. They had a Chamber of Commerce um, from Montreal come on and talk. And they talked about the idea of matching gifts, either in cash product or uh, gift card, which I thought was really interesting. And the idea of small amounts. So it may be um, $500 matches on gift cards with three businesses that you work with routinely. Um, and spend money with routinely. So more uh, food banks or organizations that are purchasing products or services from local businesses, these matching gifts make a lot more sense. So the example of the food card I'll use because it's the easiest. Um, if someone were to purchase a $50 gift card from a local grocery store and donate it to your organization, the grocery store would match that $50 gift card. So the organization would actually get $100. So those are a little more um, relationship-based as opposed to just asking for money that gets matched. Um, but definitely a way if you have strong local business partners that you're shopping with, that that could be a way to um, raise some money a little bit outside of the box and support local business, which seems like a theme um, that is really exciting right now in our communities. The next thing is employee volunteerism from home. If there are volunteer projects that um, can be done virtually, working with your partners, corporate partners, to see if they would like to volunteer on them from home. Um, again, reimagined Dine to Donate, which is a uh, something I've seen a lot in the UP where it's maybe 10% of um, dine-ins today only go to an organization. Uh, looking at that as a takeout option instead of a dine-in option because of the restrictions on seating. And then building off your current sponsors. If you have sponsors that are out there that you've worked with in the past and it's been more of a transactional relationship, um, talking with them to see what's going well with them. Um, if there's areas that the pandemic has uh, caused them to struggle. And then is there a place where your nonprofit could partner with them on Giving Tuesday to help with some of those struggles or to highlight what's going well? Um, each local business and sponsor, you know, is going to be a little bit different in how they're doing right now. So reaching out, asking, seeing, um, they might have an idea of something that you're not thinking of. So just making sure you're keeping in contact with them and seeing if there's a way 
that they can support your Giving Tuesday initiative um, that might be different than the way you've thought of it in the past. All right, time for another poll. So poll number two is, have you hosted a non-monetary giving opportunity on, a pa on past Giving Tuesdays? So if you haven't participated in the past, you can skip this poll. But if you have, have you hosted a non-monetary giving opportunity in the past? All right, votes are rolling in. We'll leave it open for about five more seconds. Awesome. All right, we'll close it and share. So only about a quarter have done this. So this will be maybe a little new information for some of you that haven't done this. If you have done it, um, maybe when we get to open mic, you can share a little bit about what you did um, and if it worked, but Non-monetary giving is something that they really stressed right now uh, with the economic climate, um, just everything that's going on. Giving might look a little different in 2020. So they stress that non-monetary giving is a way to honor all ways that people can give, right? Um, looking beyond just the um, treasure part of time, talent, and treasure and seeing if there's times time or talent that's out there that you need. Um, so a few ideas that were brought forward. First is a community engagement activity. Uh, this is one of my favorites. They suggested um, an Instagram photo contest. I think of places that may have property or maybe promoting a certain area. Um, this is not only a way to engage and expand your social media, but it's a way to create content. Um, it could be a photo contest on your campus or a photo contest um, on your trail. It builds that community. It gets people out exploring um, what you have to offer. Um, and if you're doing something community-wide, this was one of my favorite. One of, I believe it was Amplify Austin, and they're um, down in Austin, Texas. They do a a day besides Giving Tuesday where it's just all about giving local and they had all the local businesses with signs in their community change their sign um, to the hashtag that was used for the photo contest. So people could go around, take pictures with the signs in the background, um, share a little bit about their favorite local business or who they're supporting on that day. The hashtag was right there to remind them and they did, um, it was a $100 buy local card was the giveaway. Um, and they had three judges. They were, they picked some local photographers to be the judges. Um, so it was kind of a, a fun way if you don't want to focus on that monetary giving to um, still do something fun in the community. The next is a service project, specifically a service project that can kind of be done on your own. So the idea that was put forward on that one that was done on Giving Tuesday Now back in May um, in Tennessee was free little library blessing boxes. So you've all probably seen the little libraries all over, um, really the UP, I've seen them in so many places. And with the blessing boxes, they put together supplies beyond books, including things like canned goods and hygiene products. And a family would adopt a little library and they would add their blessing box to it and kind of keep an eye on it and post on social media to let people know which boxes needed what supplies. Um, and they had a donation box where people could just drop off things to go in the blessing boxes. And then they made sure that they went all over and they ended up building six additional ones it went over so well um, and those six additional were placed just at um, really human service based agencies like Salvation Army, St. Vincent de Paul. Uh, so if someone worked a swing shift and wasn't able to get to an agency during their open hours these little library blessing boxes were still available. So that was a really cool way to um, reimagine service projects so it's not bringing together a hundred people 
to do something, but instead each family is kind of like out monitoring their own little spot. And then the last idea was promotion of giving, but giving what you already have. Um, so that could be a blood drive, a book drive, a food drive, um, all kinds of different things that people may already have. Um, and you can use your volunteers to manage and distribute as long as they are socially distanced, masked, and safe. So if you have a good volunteer base and you want to engage them on Giving Tuesday, this promotion of giving things that um, people already have could be a good way to do it. Then we have virtual events. I've heard so much about virtual events, right? Like they're the big thing right now. Um, planning is super critical on the um, kind of how you're going to move forward. So the advice that I have is to work backwards. Figure out what you want your virtual event to look like and then pick your platform. Don't go out and get a platform and then try to build your virtual event on it. Um, look at what you wanna do and then work backward. Do you, do you need breakout rooms? Do you wanna raise money on it? Um, how many people are going to be involved? Those type of questions, then pick your platform. Um, live streams are really the hot thing right now. Um, a few ideas for live streams would be a fireside chat. You could do that with sponsors, your clients, donors, just to get information out about your services, what you're doing on Giving Tuesday. Um, you can sell sponsorships on your live stream. Uh, I think that those sponsorships may not be as large of dollar amounts as we've seen for physical events, but it's still possible to get sponsors for live streams. And, you know, you can include the, your logo, their logo in it. Um, like I said, invite them to be part of the chat. If you do that more like intimate fireside discussion about why they give, um, make sure to hype it up. Use calendar invites, Facebook events, email blasts, all of those different ways to get the information out and consider pre-recording part of it. Um, there's nothing wrong with pre-recording. You can, depending on which platform you use, you can make it appear live. Um, so there are some that will, if you've seen like a Facebook live stream or a YouTube live stream where it almost looks like a Zoom call, there's three or four, uh, people that are on the screen at the same time, they're using special platforms to do that um, on top of Zoom. So those platforms do allow for pre-recorded things to be inserted. So you could do 10 minutes live and then show your agency video that's five minutes long and that you already have. So you don't have to try to recreate that live. Um, so again, it goes back to that working backwards. What do you already have? What do you need to add to it? And then finding the platform that will fit for you. And then um, Instagram campaign, that is another thing you can do. This is a little more, um, there is a donate button now for Instagram, how frequently it's used here in the UP, especially not, not super sure about that. But if you wanna do, um, more of a, a PR push, an Instagram campaign could be a little less intimidating. Um, you don't have to go live, you can just use images and you can do that to spread the word. The reason that they highlighted Instagram specifically um, is that in the research, I'll have to find the exact numbers, but the generation that is on Instagram is the generation that understands Giving Tuesday the most. So Giving Tuesday has primarily been spread on digital platforms. It's not um, as well known if you aren't online. And so the generation that's using Instagram, which I believe is the 25 to 40 year olds now, um, I know it's my platform of choice. They're the ones that have the capacity to give and the interest in giving and understand that it would be um, that the donate button on Instagram is legitimate. It's going to your organization. Um, so that's why Instagram was the one that they recommended if you're just doing 
a promotions campaign. All right, time for another poll. Let's launch poll three. Maybe. There we go. So the third poll is, have you had youth involved in your Giving Tuesday campaign? Uh, the votes are flying in. We'll leave it open for about 10 more seconds. All right, we'll end it now. Share results. All right, not too many of you have involved youth in your Giving Tuesday campaign. So um, if you do work with young people, do I have the initiative for you? Um, you may remember seeing information about what was called Giving Tuesday Kids last year. They've rebranded to Giving Tuesday Spark um, because young people are the spark to action. Um, and this is primarily for kids between the ages of 6 and 18. These projects are youth created and youth led. So it's not your organization going out and putting together a project for kids and calling it a Giving Tuesday Spark project. It is the kids that you're working with saying, I really care about what you're doing. I want to host a can drive for you. I am going to have a bake sale at my school for you. I am going to get together nine of my friends, so there's 10 of us, and we're going to come over and um, do the landscaping on your property. Um, on Giving Tuesday. It's going to be snowing. They're going to be shoveling. I don't know why I said landscape. They're going to be shoveling your, your sidewalks, but you get what I'm saying. Um, it's youth that are, um, they use the word hand raising in Giving Tuesday a lot, and I really like that. It's youth raising their hand and saying, yes, I'm here for your organization. I'm going to raise money. I am going to volunteer. Um, I am going to do what I can as a youth to support your, your organization. So if you have youth um, that you work with, making them aware of Giving Tuesday Spark, uh, it's givingtuesdayspark.org. And I have a bunch of resources I'll be sending everyone to, and um, I'll be including a bunch of links in a follow-up email. Um, one of them will be Giving Tuesday Spark. Um, the kids can go on with parental permission and register their project. And then they'll be, they'll have the resources um, provided by Giving Tuesday. They have an idea list and they have some amazing young people that are ambassadors um, from all over the world that the kids can connect with. Um, I've gotten to meet Chloe from Chloe Cares. And if you're not familiar with Chloe, she's a 13 year old in LA and she creates um, bags for the homeless. She sews them herself. She gets donations. She fills them and then she goes out and into shelters and distributes them to people. Um, and she's on Instagram. She has like hundreds of thousands of followers. It's just really awesome to see this young woman stepping up and taking care of her community. And she's the one that really created Giving Tuesday Spark. So um, when the kids get registered, they're, they're connected to peers that are doing this work, not adults. And I think that's a really cool opportunity for them to see what's happening all over the world with their peers. And then the last thing, like I mentioned, um, Giving Tuesday has historically been a one-day thing, and now they're looking at 52 Tuesdays. And that kind of springs the idea of what if every Tuesday was Giving Tuesday? And each Tuesday, they're kind of picking a, a cause and sending out an email with information on how you can support that cause. So this launched in between um, Giving Tuesday Now and regular Giving Tuesday. Um, if you're not familiar with Giving Tuesday Now, it was held back in May as a direct response to COVID-19. And people wanted to help, especially from home, because we were all home. And these emails kind of 
originally they were daily and now they've got them down to just once a week, but they were ways to help from home. And now they're moving into just ways to help in general. Um, so the last two, the one that came out this last Tuesday was supporting literacy around the world. And the one um, the week before was making back to school a success. And so you can um, follow Giving Tuesday and kind of keep an eye on on what they're doing because one of the one of the Tuesdays will probably actually many Tuesdays could be related to your cause. Um, so it's just another rallying point to remind people how they can get involved, how they can give back, and how they can give um, beyond just that one day. There are a few new resources that I'm excited to share with everyone that they put together. Uh, first off is the goals worksheet. Like I said, I'll be sending this out to everyone. The goals worksheet is four pages. It um, really prompts you on how to set measurable goals for your campaign. Um, they found that campaigns, individual organization campaigns that have goals are more successful than organiz organizations that just say, hey, we're doing Giving Tuesday. Um, so this is a really great tool to help you figure out what you want your Giving Tuesday to accomplish. Next up is the toolkit and timeline. This year's timeline, finally, they've started in October 26th. If you've used their timelines in the past, they started like July 1st. And I love Giving Tuesday, but like six months of prep is a lot, right? And so this is a lot more manageable. It's about a month and a half of things you can do to get ready um, internally and communications externally about what you're doing. Um, so this is a really great, great tool. And as you can see, it says this year's date. So they've kind of mapped it out for this year. And so there are things about COVID in it, how to stay safe, um, all of that's included. And how to, how to think through if you're really changing what you've done in the past because of um, what's happening right now. And then they've also put together a virtual events guide. It's really, really great. It asks a lot of prompting questions. Um, they actually held a youth rally. They've held two now, one around um, racial injustice and one around mental health, specifically for the Giving Tuesday Spark Kids. And they've used what they learned on those two virtual rallies to put together this guide. So it's not just them saying, oh, here's best practices. It's them saying, here's what we did, here's what worked, here's what didn't, here's what we wish we would have thought of. So this is a really great tool if you are thinking about doing something virtual. Um, and again, all of these links will be included in a follow-up email. So you'll be able to download them, fill them out. Um, and there's a, a lot more tools too, they just aren't new. So I'll make sure that the entire toolkit list is on there. Um, so if there are older resources that you want to access, you'll be able to access those as well. So how are you feeling? Are you ready? We're going to do our annotation game again. Um, so I'm going to have you find that sticker button, and I'm going to have you put a heart on the continuum as to how you feel. So how you feel, <laughs> awesome. We have no idea what we're doing, but we're excited. Um, kind of more towards the middle is, I have a plan, but I need to kind of work it out a little bit. And then all the way to the right is, uh, would you like to see my binder of goals and timelines, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You're ready. Giving Tuesday's got, it's, you're gonna crush it. So let's see. Lots of work to do. Awesome. Popping them in. Okay, so people are kind of thinking we're getting close to having a plan. Perfect, all right. I'm gonna clear these out and I'm gonna share with you a little bit about how we can help you. Um, so some of the things we're looking at here at Grow and Lead, um, we will be having our directory again, that'll be launching October 1st. So you can go online, register, um, we send the directory, like I said, out to all the media so they know what's happening in the UP as well as our entire email list. Um, just to get the word out, that normally goes out the Monday, the Monday before Giving Tuesday to everyone. 
Um, we're exploring alternatives to our 906 photos. If I've ever came and crashed your office with my gold 906, um, we probably won't be able to do that this year. I'm not, uh, I have my fingers crossed. Maybe we will, but we'll see. So we're looking at alternatives. Maybe it'll be um, a live stream. I don't know. If we're, we're thinking through things. Um, I am doing one-on-one -on -one brainstorm sessions, uh, especially for those of you that had a more um, in-person activity or event and you're trying to figure out what to do with that. I'll be selling, sending everyone a Calendly link in my follow-up. Um, and that's linked directly to my Google Calendar. So you can go on, find a spot that's free. If you'd like to do a Zoom call with me, I'm happy to brainstorm and think through things with you. Um, so you can book that. Uh, we'll be doing our digital toolkit again with UP branded um, posts that you'll be able to add your logo to just to give some consistency to things. And depending on kind of where people are going, we can do more trainings. Um, so if 75% of you that are on the call are like, we're all going to do virtual events, I'm happy to put together some sort of like things to think through on virtual events. Or if everyone's going to, we'll just kind of see, we'll let me know, let me know what you'd want more information and training on. And we would be happy to consider doing something around it um, to make sure that everyone feels supported and excited about Giving Tuesday. So with that, we're at the open mic time, so let me stop recording.